This also, conference will now be uh, recorded. We'll be recording this website and um, it will be posted online afterwards. So if you need to leave early or um, you miss out on part of it, you'll be able to hear it later. And I'm also doing the same webinar again, I believe on July 9th in the afternoon. So um, that will be happening as well. Uh, so this is our student data team. Um, there's actually a couple more people that uh, we haven't gotten a picture of, but uh, we are all here and we Hello, can you guys hear me now? <clears throat> okay, I switched to a different microphone, so hopefully, hopefully that'll help. Okay, thank you for letting me know that you can't hear me. If it goes out again, um, please let me know. Okay, uh, so here is uh, the student data portal. It is a secure online system, and like I was just saying, um, all of your data is private that you enter. Um, we have an encrypted system that keeps it protected and uh, we don't send it anywhere it's not supposed to go. Um, also, we are continually trying to improve uh, the website. So after I, uh, after I do the webinar and then also after we do um, data reporting, we try to send out a survey to everybody to get feedback. Um, we really want to just make it as easy uh, for you guys to be able to report your data to us as possible. So um, please let us know uh, how we can help you do that. And we've been trying to take your feedback and continually make improvements to the system. Okay. Okay, so this is our timeline for this year. Um, we started sending everybody who... Um, so, so you guys have, there's two different parts to this. There's, uh, there's entering information into our CareerBridge website, and then there's also reporting your student data. Um, so we started sending out email blasts on May 1st to uh, whoever is the CareerBridge contact at your school, um, letting them know they needed to start updating your programs on our CareerBridge website. Uh, sometimes it's the same user, and sometimes it's um, a different user, so uh, I wouldn't be super worried if you didn't get that email. It went to somebody at your organization, so hopefully um, the person who's supposed to be updating your career bridge is taking care of it, because if you did not, it, you will run into some uh, sticking points when you go to report your data. Um, so we asked that you updated your CareerBridge website um, area between May 1st and June 7th. Um, and then what we actually do is we take all of the information you enter about your programs on CareerBridge and we suck it over into the uh, student data portal and that is um, where we get the information on the programs you're supposed to be reporting. So if your CareerBridge uh, programs are not correct, then they won't be correct in your uh, student data portal. So uh, the reporting cycle starts this year on July 1st. And then uh, like you can see right here, we've got two webinars, one today and one on the 9th. And like I mentioned before, um, they're both the same webinar and going over the same information twice. So you don't need to attend both of them um, unless you really, really want to hear me talk again. Um, and then this year, the portal closes on August 28th. So that will be your last day to report your student data to us. Um, so I know that this year it's a little bit early. We usually do uh, the data reporting in the fall. Um, what 
happened was we got a new uh, mandate from the federal government that we had to submit a big giant report to them by October 1st, um, and the report has to use this year's data. So we had to be able to collect the data early enough so that we can um, crunch all the data and be able to use it for this report that we have to write. So um, reporting will continue to be um, on this cycle from here on out. So it will not be in the fall anymore. It will start, I'm, I'm guessing every year it will start on July 1st or right around the beginning of July um, since your reporting period ends uh, June 30th. So um, I just wanted to let you guys know that's happening. Um, we tried to send out some emails uh, earlier, letting you know it was coming much earlier this year. Okay, so what programs to report? So um, different types of schools have to report different kinds of programs, um, some less because we get um, some of your data from other sources. So uh, if you're a private career school, you need to report data on all your programs. It's required as um, part of your uh, licensing and um, you might get hung up in your renewal process if you don't report your data to us. So if you're a private career school, please make sure you report. Um, if you are a community and technical college, you have to report any non-credit certificate program that you want on our state's uh, eligible training provider list. Um, and then we get the rest of your data on the other certificate programs and the rest of the programs from another source. And then uh, public four-year colleges is any certificate program that you want to be on the state's ETP list. And then uh, private four-year colleges have to report all programs um, that you want to be on the ETP list, both uh, certificate and um, higher than certificate programs. Okay, so what students to report? Um, this gets kind of confusing, and I know we have a lot of questions about this um, from year to year. Um, so we want you to report all the students within the programs that we've asked you to report on. Um, any students that were enrolled in the program between July 1st, 2018 and June 30th, 2019. Um, so that includes uh, private pay students and also students who are, um, you know, they get federal funding from a work source office or from um, a variety of different programs. The only students uh, within those programs that we don't want you to report are students that are 100% um, funded for uh, by their employers. Um, so if you maybe have a truck driving school and you have a student that's already been hired on um, to drive a truck somewhere and their employer is paying for their entire training, um, those are the only students that we don't want to know about. So we want self-pay and anyone who's receiving any kind of federal funding um, and all other students in there except for the ones that are funded by employers. Okay, um, so why does this data make a difference? Um, so we collect your data and we evaluate it um, and then we use it to, we use it in a report that we put out every year called workforce training results. Um, and it helps us see um, kind of uh, what programs that are getting uh, government funding, like how well they're doing, how, how well their students are doing. And then we also post the results of uh, our gathering of data on the CareerBridge website. Uh, and then we also use the information to, um, to help uh, legislators figure out uh, which uh, programs they want to invest more money in. So uh, your data really does make a difference and we really appreciate you uh, taking the time to report it to us because it helps us a lot. Okay, so the last thing before I actually uh, get into the meat of the website and show you how to report your data, I just wanted to remind you again one more time to not forget about CareerBridge. Uh, like I said before, we pull the data from CareerBridge into uh, the portal and so 
if any programs are missing or they don't match, uh, you'll get stuck and you'll have to go back and uh, re-enter all that information into CurveBridge before you're able to report your data. So um, we don't want you to get stuck. And I bet you guys don't want to get stuck either. So um, if you haven't done that yet for some reason, please make sure um, that you do that before the portal opens on July 1st. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking about um, the actual data reporting process. Um, so all the links in the website, or any, sorry, any links that I've sent you in an email so far will point you to our Workforce Board website. Um, if Let's see, if you don't have the link to get to the data reporting page, you'd be on our main page, which is www.wtb.wa.gov, and you'd go to the private career schools area, and there actually, once data reporting starts, there will be a link right here under what's new that will say report your student data, and it'll take you right to this page, so uh, you won't have to dig for it, um, but it's under private career schools, and right down here, uh, report your student data. Uh, so if you can make it to this page, um, you have all the information that you need uh, to report your data. So um, we've got in this green box, this is the actual link that goes to uh, the data reporting portal. Uh, so we'll go there in just a minute, but I wanted to tell you what else is on the page. Um, the purple box, uh, this has just the links for our webinars in it and also the two links from our webinars last year. Uh, and once we finish this one today, I will uh, save it and replace, start replacing these. So uh, you will be able to rewatch this if you need to. Uh, we've got a little bit of information down here, um, sort of some frequently asked questions of, you know, what the reporting period is, what students do you need to report on, um, and then everything you need over here in this gray box is right here, you've got an authorization form. So if it's your first year reporting data or, um, or you have somebody that was reporting data at your school and you don't want them to report anymore or you've got a new person that you want to report, you're going to need to fill out one of these forms. Um, so you will have You'll fill out the form and in this top section, you'll put in the person's uh, name and uh, all of their information that you want to be able to report the data. And then at the bottom, we need somebody higher up like a school owner or an administrator to just sign saying, um, yes, you have permission to report data. So uh, once you send us the form, we will enter you into the a portal and we'll hit a button that will send you a temporary password and then you'll be able to log in and set your password for whatever you need it to be. Okay, so um, there's also a user guide right here. Um, I'm not going to click on it. It's a million pages long. Um, I would recommend if you need help, I would probably Think that you would re go back into this webinar instead of using the user guide. I think that that would be my preference. The user guide is fine, it's just really long. You might be able to better find what you need um, just kind of uh, scrolling through the webinar. Um, okay, and then uh, the other thing you need to report your data is this spreadsheet. So, this so there's actually two different ways to report your data. You can either enter the data directly into uh, the student data portal, or you can fill out this spreadsheet. Um, I would highly recommend filling out the spreadsheet if you have more than like one or two students. Um, you're going to end up doing a lot more work than you need to do if you don't use this uh, spreadsheet. So I would do that and I'll go into the spreadsheet uh, further a little bit later. Um, if you notice, uh, it's blue this year. I think last year it was either, I think it was orange or purple. I don't remember, but um, it's how we keep track of it. So, so if you're having some problems um, uploading or entering data, 
um, make sure you're using the right spreadsheet. Um, a lot of the spreadsheet is programmed to be able to not let you enter information that you're not supposed to, especially these um, exit date boxes. It, it won't let you enter a date if it's not within the time frame that the exit date is supposed to be. So um, please make sure that you have downloaded and are using this new blue spreadsheet this year. Uh, last year's won't upload into the portal. Um, so make sure you get the new one. Okay, and then this little guy right here, get the codes you need to know. It is a sheet that documents um, every single piece on that Excel spreadsheet. Um, and it will tell you piece by piece exactly what we're looking for to be entered in each of those boxes. So there's some boxes where um, you have to enter like a, a number instead of a word. And so this will show you um, what, what the numbers correlate with. Um, on the actual spreadsheet, we've installed uh, drop down menus. So a drop down, hopefully you'll be able to use the drop down menu um, and that will also show you all the options. But in case something happens to the Excel spreadsheet, um, you've got all the codes right here for everything you need to enter. Okay, so I'm gonna pop on over. So once again, right here in this green box is the actual um, website for going to report your data. I'm gonna click on it, head on over there. Okay, so this is the actual uh, student data portal. So, um, let's see. Uh, so I guess a couple of questions we get is, uh, how do you know you have an account? Um, if you don't know if you have an account or not, uh, you can either email us or call us. Um, there are several people that are uh, working on um, answering your questions for this. So if you send us an email, uh, we should get back to you pretty darn soon. And if you call us, it's more than likely you'll get a hold of somebody immediately. Um, so if you don't know if you have an account and you need to know, uh, just call us or email us and we will let you know. Um, and if you don't have an account, once again, you've got to fill out that assurances form and send it in to us and then we will set you up with an account. So if you already have an account, but you can't remember your password, there is this lovely little button down here. Um, we don't actually keep track of your passwords. Um, we can help, we can help reset your password and we can help assign you a specific password if you, if for some reason this forgot password feature isn't working. Um, so if you forgot your password, hit the forgot your password button and enter your email and hit reset password and it will send you a new password. Um, just a warning about that. Once you hit reset password, please wait for a few minutes and uh, see if you'll get one. Sometimes our system goes a little bit slow and it takes a couple minutes to get one sent to you. If you hit the reset password button too many times in a row, it will lock your account and tell you that your account is locked and then you will have to call us um, and we will have to unlock it for you. So if it happens, not a big deal, we can unlock it for you, but um, you can avoid that happening by not hitting the reset password button more than once. So just wait for it, it'll come. And if it doesn't, um, let us know and we can help you um, get into your account. Okay, so um, down here we've got a contact us button. We've got a little help center uh, with a few answers to some questions that you might have. Um, and then I think this goes back to our uh, workforce board website. So, uh, okay. So we are going to log in. Because I remembered my password because I wrote it down. Okay, so now we're in. So uh, this is what you guys will see uh, when you log in to report your data. Um, it'll have different dates, and I don't think it updates these dates until um, July 1st when this opens for you. Um, so I think if you were, I think you can actually log in right now, but you won't be able to upload your data right now. So just wait until July 1st. Okay. Um, so there's, uh, we tried to make a really, we tried to make it really simple for you to be able to 
uh, report your data. So the first thing you're going to want to do is follow step one, which is view your programs. Um, and you can also get to your programs from over here on the side. So if you click your programs, so this is showing um, all of the programs that we are expecting you to report on. Um, and it'll it'll be in a different year. It'll be it'll say 2018, 19, but since the dates haven't rolled over yet, I'm stuck in last year's data reporting system. So, um, but it will show you it'll show you all the programs you need to report on. So if you get to this point and you are looking at the list and thinking these are not right, there's programs missing, or you know we don't do this program anymore. Um, please uh, let us know and we will have to remove the program from the system for you. So um, go ahead and let us know if your programs are not matching what you are actually offering. Okay, so you're gonna go back to data reporting steps. So the next thing you're gonna look at is uh, view your continuing students. So uh, these are students that you had reported to us last year uh, that you marked as uh, still enrolled from last year. So um, we want to know what happened to those guys this year. Are they still going through the program? Have they left? Have they completed your program? So if you click on this, it should show you um, a list of the students that you had reported on last year that didn't end your program. Uh, so you can actually, from here, you can export a spreadsheet. If you hit export, it'll actually um, open a new spreadsheet uh, with that student on it, and then you can start entering your new students this year. So if you don't want to have to go back and figure out you know, what students are still in the programs from the last time you reported, this is a super easy way to do that. So you can just start reporting from here. Um, I think that button will come in really handy. I would guess a lot of a lot of schools probably have several continuing students. So definitely check in there and make sure um, that you're reporting on all those continuing students. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to data reporting steps. Um, step three is the instructions. Like I said, there's a big long instruction guide on how to use the portal. So I'm not gonna click on that, but it's right there if you need it. Okay, so once you've checked all that stuff out and made sure all that's okay, then you are going to hit this button and start your report. Okay, so when you get here, like I said, this will say 2018-19, but I'm stuck in last year's uh, data reporting system. So, uh, so like I said, there are two different ways to enter your data. I'm going to talk about the um, student entry form first. Like I said before, I would not recommend this unless you only have a couple students. Um, it is really, you have to enter everything in one at a time throughout the whole thing. Uh, so I do not recommend that anybody uses this unless there aren't very many students. Uh, but if you wanted to use this, you would hit add student and then you would enter that student's information in right here. Um, and you still have to follow the same things that are happening on the spreadsheet. It's just in a different format. And then you'd hit the save button or you could hit this button that says save and add another. Um, but I don't want to do that because I have more students than that. So I'm going to go back to student data. Nope, start your report. Sorry, I'm going back to start your report. Um, if you got in here and you do not have your um, Excel spreadsheet for whatever reason, you can download it from right here. Uh, so I'm gonna show you, I have a pretend spreadsheet that I made up. So um, okay, so the spreadsheet itself, and of course now mine's not working because I messed around with it. Um, hold on, let me get a blank one. So we tried to make the spreadsheet really easy for you guys to use. So every single box you click on um, that there's more information for will have uh, more information in the box. 
Um, so these three columns, A, B, and C, are super important. Um, this is where um, most people run into errors when they're trying to upload their spreadsheet. Uh, so these three columns right here must exactly match what is in the Your Programs tab. So you, when you're entering it, you have to make sure you have all of these three things exactly the same. Um, it will let you upload it if they're not correct, but you will get errors and you'll have to go back and fix it. So make sure that you're um, entering all of the information exactly the same. And then all of these tabs over here, like I mentioned before, have uh, drop down boxes. So uh, hopefully it's not too confusing. Like gender, you'll be able to pick the drop down box and select one of the two options. And it tells you right next to the box what every single number represents. So you can just pick one of the numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and after I put in all of the data on my students, then I'm going to go in here and go back to start your report and I'm going to upload my file. So I'm going to pick my file and I'm sure it's buried deep on here because I forgot to put it on the desktop. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so I've got my spreadsheet up, uh, put in there. I'm gonna hit upload data. <coughs> okay, so this is telling you it worked. If something is super, super wrong with your spreadsheet, like you're using the wrong file format um, or something is horribly wrong, it won't even let you up upload it. It'll, uh, it'll tell you that it can't upload your spreadsheet. But this is telling me, it let me upload it, uh, but it found some errors that I need to fix. Um, and it actually tells you, if you click on view all report errors, it will give you a list of every single error in your spreadsheet um, and where the error is at in the row. Um, good question. Nancy just asked if she has two locations to report, can they both be on the same spreadsheet? Um, the answer is, Yes, so uh, you you report everything on the same spreadsheet. Um, just make sure under column A over here where you put location, uh, that you're putting in the right location and that the location matches exactly what the location was um, on your uh, programs page. Okay, so I'm going to go to view all report errors. Okay, so it is telling me in row two, I have an error in this location program award type and that it must exactly match what's on your programs page. So usually I just pull them up on the screen next to each other and I go back to my programs page. Let's see, and it looks like, oh, I looks like I spelled decent wrong right here. Um, and then let's see, so that was two. It said there was one in row three. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is just go, go through here and make sure that everything uh, matches exactly. Um, one big thing that people usually miss is um, the award type is certificate and then they'll go enter over here certificate of completion. So it has to be exactly the same wording written exactly the same way. Okay, so we are gonna pretend like I fixed all my errors and then, um, oh yep, yeah, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier, uh, don't forget to, uh, when you download the spreadsheet, to save it somewhere on your computer. Um, if you don't save it anywhere on your computer, it won't be there, and then you'll go to upload it later and be really, really sad when all the data you entered is nowhere. So um, don't forget to save 
the spreadsheet to your computer somewhere. Um, I know that some schools, um, I, tr I try to have the um, new spreadsheet for the new year made really early. So I know a lot of schools uh, collect this information over the entire school year, and then they just, they're done by the end of it. Um, so um, I try to get you a spreadsheet early and yeah, make sure it's saved somewhere on your computer. So, okay, I'm gonna go back to start your report. I'm gonna upload an Excel file because I fixed all my errors. And now I'm going to upload uh, the one that I saved over and I'm gonna hit upload data. Okay, so there we go. So um, you will get this message. You will get the red error message if you have errors. If you don't have errors, uh, it will say this, but you still have to go uh, to the certify and submit page, which we will do in just a second. I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, on the start your report page, uh, this step five right here, uh, if you don't have any students in any of your programs or, you know, if you don't have students in one of your programs, uh, we still need to know that and we need to know why. So um, this, this particular one right here is for if you have no students at all in your entire school. Um, so then you'll just need to, uh, of course, the drop down box isn't working because I, I already uploaded uh, data. But if you have no students at all, you will uh, pick the drop down box and pick the reason why you have no students and hit certify no students. You can't. Yeah, it's just because there's those, there, because you already have students oh. loaded. Um, Okay. And most people wouldn't wouldn't have that anyway. They might have it for a single program. Right. Um, yeah. We we more often see that people don't have students for uh, like one specific program, not your entire school. So after you do all that, and like it was showing on the last page, you have to go to certify and submit your report. <laughs> um, so this is the final step. So um, here you can see, like this this program that I have right here. I reported no students and so um, it wants to know why so um, anything that's flagged in red right here you'll have to take care of before you submit uh, so you will hit the little pencil button um, and then you will enter one of these reasons from the drop down menu uh, maybe you just didn't offer training this year um, Type whatever you want, hit save, and it will save it. So uh, now that you have no red in here, um, do you need to report no students if a course was canceled? You need to report if you have if you have uh, any students that were taking the course in this time period. We still want to know about it, um, even if you canceled the course in the middle of. Um, this reporting period. The social security numbers. Um, so, so we we require that you ask for their social security numbers. It's not required that you report, but if you don't report your social security numbers, um, what happens is uh, we take your data and we we do a, a wage match with another agency. And that's where we get uh, information on what happened to your students after they left your program. Um, so if we don't have that information, we can't do the wage match and then we can't evaluate your programs. So um, if you don't report the social security numbers, what will end up happening is um, we will come back to you and uh, you will either have to provide us with a bunch more data um, to be able to verify what happened to your students. Um, and if we can't verify that, uh, we won't be able to let your program on the ETP list. So, um, so ultimately it's not required, but it will save you a lot of time and work, especially if you are concerned about your programs getting removed from the state's ETP list. 
Um, and we also have, I think it's on our website, um, we have some sample language that you can use to help ask your students. Um, and I know, you know, I know that students probably aren't super excited about giving their social security numbers, but I think a lot of times um, they probably have to give it to be enrolled in the school, maybe, I don't know. Is that a thing? They don't have to. They don't have to. Um, They're on the federal financial aid. Right. So, yeah, so the short answer is we require that you ask. You don't have to. You're not required to report it, but if you don't, it gets really complicated for you. So um, hopefully you'll be able to get them from your students. Um, okay, so once you get to the very end and you've corrected anything in this box, then you are going to uh, check this little box that says you certify that all your data is correct that you submitted and hit the submit report button. And then uh, it will tell you at the bottom, congratulations, your student data report has been submitted. So that is um, how you know it went through. Uh, it, won't, it won't send you an email or anything. So make sure you see that green box at the bottom. Um, and then we will, once we get toward the end of reporting, we start, we send out reminder emails and we, we remove everybody from the list that's already reported when we send out the reminder emails. So if you have um, reported your data and you're still getting reminder emails, um, definitely respond to the reminder email and say, hey, I, I think I already reported my data. Can you check on it? Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, hopefully it's not too complicated for you guys. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, if, if you have any questions about your, your school specifically, uh, please send us an email. Um, ah, what time on Monday does the portal open? I mean, I think it opens at midnight, but who wants to report their data at midnight? <laughs> so it, it will be open by the time you get to work on Monday. If you are chopping at the bit to get it done, Monday morning, we are ready for you. Um, okay, does anybody else have any questions? You can type it in the box, or um, if it would help people, I can turn everyone's microphones on. Okay, I unmuted I mean, everyone. So, so, uh, does anybody have any other questions? I know that Sharon has a lot on her plate. She works for the government. She works. She has a lot. <laughs> so the um, uh, so the first question was how soon can we get the 2020 spreadsheet? And I think that'll be basically after this uh, portal closes because um, otherwise you'll get confused on which spreadsheet to to work on. Okay. Yep. I mean, I can I can work on. I can work on um, Nancy if you want to send me an email. Um, if you send an email into that data reporting email, I can make the 2020 spreadsheet and I can email it to you. I know not everybody wants it and I don't want to confuse people by having both posted on the website. But if you're already going to start collecting data July 1st for next year, I'm happy to email you um, the spreadsheet so you can start doing that. So the email address, if you have questions specific to your school, is careerbridge at wtb.wa.gov. No, I don't uh, want to use that one. It's data reporting. Oh, data reporting. Data sorry. Re sorry, it's data reporting at wtb.wa.gov. Um, and uh, I remember it's the other microphone. The, um, oh. uh, the contact us, uh, uh, the link at the bottom of each page is also where you could uh, contact us. Um, the... Uh, the other question is, um, what's, uh, do we report students who have canceled the course? And uh, yes, you report every student who was enrolled at any time during the year. Uh, so whether they canceled or completed or uh, were still taking the course at the end of the year, you report all three. So there's a column in the spreadsheet over here um, that will ask you what their enrollment status is. So if you had a student that uh, canceled the course, you'd mark 
uh, withdrew to withdrew terminated from the program. So yes, we definitely want all those students. We want to see all of them. Uh, so the next question was, what information about the school is reported on Purbridge? And it's basically everything that you've entered as uh, as information about the program itself. So like course descriptions and so forth. And then we'll also have, um, if the if you report enough students, it takes about uh, 10 students over the course of three years, uh, we'll report demographic information about the students, um, such as the, uh, the percentage of gender or race. Um, and then if you have enough students uh, that we're, we were able to find uh, information about um, their outcomes, we'll report that too. And so here's a, uh, an example uh, of uh, the sort of information we report. Uh, and, and basically all this information comes from uh, UI uh, outcomes, so uh, earnings, the employment rate, uh, and then the, uh, the industries that they're in. And if you think this information is wrong, you, you can uh, uh, contact us and then provide supplementary information. Uh, for example, if you know that quite a few more students were actually employed, um, because we do miss uh, certain inf information like uh, self-employment. Uh, so, uh, it, even if you pass the ETP tests, you could still contact us about this information that we report. Um, and just to reiterate, if, if your program doesn't have enough students, I just I want you to know that the, the students' information is kept private. So, if you only have a couple of students, we don't post these um, results. Um, so, you know, there's no chance of anybody being able to figure out who your students are. Um, we try to keep everything super secure. Okay, let's see. Nancy, if they left a program, do we mark it a fail? So if they, if they left the program, you're going to want to mark that number two, that they withdrew, terminated from the program. Pass fail. Oh, pass fail. Yes. Barbara? Yes. Okay, yes, so if they left the program, we do want you to mark it as failed. Okay. If, if someone withdraws and returns, just report a single line for that person uh, that they, uh, that it, as if they didn't leave, because we don't really need to know uh, each step in the process. We just need to know the total outcome. Okay. Uh, but if somebody is enrolled in two different programs, be sure to report that same person twice uh, for each different program. So we need to know uh, uh, each each student and each program. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions that we can answer? If a school paid a scholarship, like a 50% scholarship for a student, and then the student pays private pay the rest of them, do they report those, those yes. students? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's just 100% so, scholarship paid for by the school they do not report. Exactly. Right. Okay. okay. If I have a student that can, okay. Nancy says if I have a student that completed the program, hold on. I have a student that completed the program in April and re-enrolled to start in August. Do I keep them as active? Yes. Yes. If they're in the same pro exact same program, just mark them as a three still enrolled, no yes. and completed program though. So they would not. Oh. Yeah, did no they, they not, did, Nancy, did they complete? The program and re-enroll to to redo the same program again. Um, Sarah, I'm hoping to get it. Um, I'm hoping to get the recording of the website up this afternoon. It will be up there. Okay, so they added features. Um, hey, Nancy, why don't you send us an email and we will go. Um, we will go, we will try to figure it out so we can get a little more information about the specific uh, student. Okay, uh, there's one that I missed. The pass-fail. So uh, you can fill in either pass-fail or GPA. Um, 
the um, you don't need to fill in both. Uh, but if you fill in both, it won't reject it. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Sorry, I'm trying to give everybody a second to type if they're still typing or thinking. Um, okay, cool. Well, um, let's see. Excuse me, I need to say sorry. Um, this is Barbara, and I just want to say this is a question I've had every year. I must have an exit date if you have a one or a two, which means they let, um, they finished the program or they left the program. Even if you don't have the exact date, put something in there that falls within the, the um, data reporting parameters, especially for the people who exited or who dropped the program and you're not sure that they're not coming back. If you mark them as a two, I have to have an exit date or it will reject your uh, data, your spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, Nancy, you can call Darlene, but I don't think she'll have the answer for you. <laughs> so if you call her here anyway. It, oh, and she's out of the office for the rest of the week, I think. So if you call, uh, ask for Barbara and she can help you figure it out. You can call the front desk. Or you can call the front desk and tell them you need help with your data reporting and um, Anthony, Anthony will get you sent to the right person to help you. Or, or a helper. Or he'll help you <laughs> himself. We don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> I don't know who you'll get. Um, okay, well, uh, thank you everybody for coming today. Um, like I said, we are here and happy to help. So um, if you go to get started and you are super confused or you just need some extra help or have any questions, um, don't hesitate to give us a call uh, or send us an email. Like I said, um, I'm checking that email box and there's a couple other people checking it several times a day. So um, we will get back to your email pretty quickly. Um, and most of us are here most of the time. So um, we can also talk to you on the phone. So thanks everybody. Uh, have a great day.